This video is going to be on Chat EIC. Chat EIC is basically a custom GPT. If you haven't heard of it, obviously there's Chat GPT, which is basically a very smart chatbot. But OpenAI has also now published Chat GPTs with an S at the end. And what that means is it's your custom version of Chat GPT, but you can give it its own knowledge base. So instead of just having the chat and then you have to upload files or you have to explain what it has to do, you have to give it instructions. You can actually have built in instructions and a built in identity and a built in knowledge base. So whatever you want to specialize the chat GPT in, you can do. So since I published quite a bit on the ESC Accelerator and I also created a training program for applicants that want to apply to the ESC Accelerator, I thought it's a good idea to also create a dedicated AI co-pilot or an AI assistant that can help applicants as they're writing their applications. Because clearly, if you can train an applicant to write the application, you can also train an AI. I mean, it should probably be easier to train an AI than to train a person. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to test it. I already published some articles about this, but this is going to be a real life test of the Chat EIC EIC Accelerator Assistant and how well it's going to do. So here's how this is going to work. Because the most realistic way of using an AI assistant is obviously to have it be very helpful for you, but you can't have too much work associated with it. So ideally, it's going to pick up on files that are going to upload. So instead of you having to explain everything to this chatbot, ideally, all you have to do is upload a pitch deck or upload a business plan or different grant application and it can gather the data for you and put it in the right format. So how this is going to work is I'm going to take a publicly available investor deck from this publicly traded company called Ginkgo Bioworks. I'm using them because they are very deep tech. It's a synthetic biology company. They're extremely scientific. They have a very technical background. And also they're publicly traded, which means that they have to publicize everything. So there's a lot of data available. So it's the perfect case study. So what I'm going to do is I've uploaded the investor deck and now I want Chat EIC to start writing sections for me. And the way this is going to work is obviously with these AI models, there's always a benefit in specializing or compartmentalizing into smaller aspects. So instead of saying, write me the entire ESC Accelerator application, this is probably not going to work because these applications are very long and nuanced. And these AI models, they're not ready to write full applications yet. So what the purpose of this is, is like a little teacher. So you have a little assistant that's going to help you out. It understands the ESC Accelerator and more important, it understands the grant writing part and it can help you. So what I've done in my training program is I've broken down the grant writing into modules. So there's about 90 different modules that are really going over all the aspects of the grant writing. So this particular ChatGPT version, Chat EIC, knows the modules. So all the modules that I have in my training program, it knows them by heart because it is in its knowledge base. So for example, now we are going to take module number two. It's a very simple one. It's the mission and the vision of the company. So first, let's put it to the test. Let's ask it to write the section for us based on this one investor deck that we just uploaded. One of the things you're going to notice with these chat GPTs or chat EIC in particular is that they are always going to search their knowledge base. This means he is now looking through the files that it has in its knowledge base. So now it's searching the files on how to write applications. This is its specialized knowledge base. Okay, so first I'm going to start just asking it what is this module? Because clearly I made up what the modules are going to be, but this chat EIC knows what the modules are. So module two should be vision and the mission of the company. So this should be a very clear aspect of a grant application that it should know how to write. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload the investor deck of Ginkgo Biowork, and then I'm going to ask it to write it specifically for that particular deep tech company. So what it explains here is basically exactly what is out of my training program. So I use soft micro, Microsoft as an example. Okay, great. So it basically knows what is the mission and the vision of the company. And then I provided the investor deck of Ginkgo Bioworks. So now I wanted to write the mission and the vision of the company. So of course the investor deck doesn't contain everything, but now it's trying to do its best. So it's trying to create a mission and trying to create a vision, but it's being a little bit general and it's trying to explain the company from the outside. So it's not really trying to explain it as the company, but it's explaining the company from how it is perceived from the outside. So I wanted to be more specific, like like you would actually use it in a grant application. So for example, now I've asked it, write the mission. So now I'm compartmentalizing, I'm breaking it down into smaller aspects, but I am saying that you have to write it as Ginkgo Bioworks. I don't want you to write it as someone who's observing Ginkgo Bioworks. You are Ginkgo Bioworks in this case. Okay, now it wrote the mission as Ginkgo Bioworks and now obviously the same for the vision. Okay, that's pretty great. Now we have a vision and a mission for Ginkgo Bioworks. All I did is I uploaded the investor deck and I have obviously the modules that are already 
turnkey so it knows what to do. But this is pretty easy. And if you want to, you can actually have it expand. You can, for example, say, hey, the vision is pretty nice, but... So now obviously I'm stretching it a bit, but just to show what it can do. Now I'm just adding a little bit of these, let's say, policy directives. So for example, inclusivity, diversity, equality, and so on is obviously very important to the EU and government institutions as a whole. So now I just ask it to expand. Give me a little bit of text, how important that is, how this is a commitment you have. And yeah, we are dedicated to creating an environment where individuals... So now it added more text. So you have to understand that these AI models and ChatGPT in particular, they don't want to write much. If you say, write me a book, it's not going to write you a book. But if you say, write me the first paragraph of the first chapter, it's going to write you that. And then you say, write me the second paragraph and the third. So you have to break it down. So the mission and the vision, this is actually sufficient for this vision and mission part, which is not a very important part of any proposal. It just has to be there. But for this, there's already enough. But if you wanted to, you can always poke it a little more. You can say, add a little bit of this. So for example, for the mission, I can say, that there's a huge barrier when it comes to cost. So for example, synthetic biology, if you want to start a synthetic biology company, you're not going to do that in the garage. This is not something where you just need a computer. You can create a SaaS company in your garage, but you can't create a synthetic biology company. So now I'm saying add something to the mission. Talk about the cost barrier. Talk about how they are actually democratizing the market to all these different startups. And I can spin that further. I can talk about Ginkgo Bioworks and about how they are fostering a startup ecosystem, how they put a conscious effort into actually creating accelerators, having this foundry base, trying to work with a lot of different startups because this is their mission. But you can add this up. The first version of the mission and vision, you can add the second and the third on top of that because for the vision, one is talking about equality and diversity. You can add that to the first part. And this part about the mission, you can add that to the first version of the mission too. So now you already have a page of text on the mission and vision. Pretty easy, not much to do. And one more thing, you can also ask it to do a web search. So for example, it has access to Bing. Clearly, Microsoft major investor in OpenAI. And you can ask it to search the internet. So for example, Ginkgo Bioworks and Synthetic Biology, it's a well-known company, a well-known technology. You can ask it to go to Bing and grab data on Ginkgo Bioworks to write, for example, another module, module one, where it talks about the founding of the company and the year of the founding and so on. So I could do that, but it's not realistic because most startups, they don't have the public profile of Ginkgo Bioworks. So you wouldn't be able to go to Bing. But I put an article on my website where you can see that you can have it look for market numbers. So you can just have it grab market reports. So here, let's take another example. So this is one where we're looking at the module 56, which is the market size and the growth. So clearly it's already going straight to the TAM SAMSOM. So the total addressable market, serviceable addressable market and serviceable obtainable market, which is also my recommendation because there's always a nice breakdown. So how is it handling this? Actually, this is not handled too great. So it definitely writes it down in the way I would like to have it. So I would like to have the TAM, SAM and SOM, but it doesn't fill in the numbers. And the investor deck actually has a few numbers on the market. They're not great, but they're very high level. So what I'm doing next is I'm going to ask it to do a Bing search. Hey, do a Bing search, look for the TAM, SAM, SOM, look for the market reports for these numbers. And it knows what to look for. It looks for a recent market report. It actually picks out quite a few market reports. They have high growth rates. So they're actually pretty good. So the only thing I would ask here is to have it converted into euros because it's US dollars, but clearly it's a US company, so that's fine. But this is pretty great. You have the references, it just picked up the market reports, you can save the references, you can put this straight into an application. And now if you want to, you can obviously ask it to be a little more precise. You can say, hey, pick one market report that we take for the TAM and then pick a smaller market report for the SAM and then also for the SOM. For example, use a bottom-up calculation. But these are all things you can do manually. So again, it's not designed to write you the second and then you have a written proposal. This is not how it works. It's an assistant. It understands what needs to be there and you can just give it data and it can outline things for you, but then you always have to make it detail things further. If it gives you a very general TAM, SAM and SOM, then you ask it now, just focus on the TAM and now look for a market report and also add some market trends, for example. And then if you like the structure, you can say, okay, now do the same thing for the SAM. Find a market report that's smaller than the TAM that can fit into a 
smaller segment. So for example, just the European synthetic biology market. And if you like the structure it has given you, then you can go to the next one. And now here's another one. This is an interesting one because here we're looking at the abstract and the title and the acronym. This is also its own module and it's doing a really good job. It picked out a really nice title, Revolutionizing Synthetic Biology, and then an abstract. The abstract is very general. So of course, this you would have to actually improve. It's a little bit too short, but you can expand on this. It's already a good structure. It's already pretty decent. And then the ethics information, it's usually not that critical for grant applications. So it can be very general here. I would still add a little more detail. It's a little too broad here. And now very interesting, the risk analysis, because it knows that it's a good idea to have at least eight risks, because this is the idea of that particular module. So what it does, it, it figures out eight risks. And it's actually pretty good because there is no risk analysis in the investor deck. There's a very small disclaimer in the footnotes of, I think, slide two, because they're a publicly traded company, they always have to write down the risks on their materials. But it came up with eight risks and they're actually pretty good. So it just decided to list these eight risks and it also added a description, likelihood, impact mitigation, which is aligned with the module for the risk analysis. But of course, as you can see, it doesn't want to write too much because it's very short. It just very briefly describes, okay, what is the risk? One sentence and then the mitigation, one sentence. You have to expand that. It's way too short. But what you can do is you can say, okay, now let's just talk about risk one. Risk one, in detail, describe what this risk is about. Just the description of that risk. And then it's going to give you long text on that particular risk. And the same for the mitigation. Give me a longer mitigation for risk one and then you force it to really expand on this part. So here's an example of how you can do it. So for example, now I said for these eight risks, give me the reasoning for the likelihood you chose because it picked the likelihood and the mitigation and so on for each risk. So now I ask it for the reasoning and it gives a really good reason why it chose medium, high and low and so on. So that's pretty good. You can actually use that. So now you already have more tags for every single risk. But you can see I didn't even compartmentalize too much. I could have also said just describe the reasoning for the likelihood for risk one. Then the text would have been bigger. But because it had to do it for every single risk, it was a little bit shorter. So if you really want to go into detail and you really want to lean on this AI model to write a proposal, you can work with it. It literally is an assistant. It is someone next to you who knows how a proposal has to look like, but who doesn't want to write too much in one go and who doesn't understand the company that well. So you always have to give it a little more input. But as you can see with this example, where you first get a structure and then you can expand on every single section, it's super powerful. And the same you could do with the impact. Why did you choose high impact, medium impact, high impact? It's going to give you a reasoning. And if you just ask it to just expand on the reasoning for risk number two, then of course, it's going to give you even more input. Okay, let's skip to a different module. So for example, I'm looking at the modules now. Let's take one that is quite tech, a very techy, very difficult to write module. Okay, module 33 is technology detail. This is where you really write down the detail of your technology. You have to break it down. You have to be very specific. And it knows exactly what I want because it talks about how does the technology look like at technology readiness level nine, meaning how does the final technology look like? Not the one you have now, not the current prototype. How does the final version look like? Very good. Chad EIC is an excellent student. That's exactly what I would have said. If you had asked me, okay, how do you write, obviously, the technology detail? What do you want to look out for? It's not complete because it's not going to give all of the knowledge base. So it knows more about writing this modules, but it's going to apply it. It's not going to paste everything that it knows, but it's going to give you a general breakdown. Okay, now I'm asking it, write it for Ginkgo. So now we have to see, is it going to write in Ginkgo's perspective or is it going to have a general perspective? Is it going to be detailed or not detailed? Of course, it doesn't want to write much. As I said, these chatbots, they never want to write a lot. They always want to be broken down, always want to write smaller chunks, but they will very happily give you an overview. Usually what they do is they give you a structure first and then the best practice, I believe, is then to ask it to give more detail on every individual part. Have it give you a structure and then in the structure, you tell it to obviously detail every single bullet point that it gives you. So now I've asked it to write module 33. So this is the technology part. This is a little more complex because especially with a deep tech company, especially something like synthetic biology, where you have software and hardware, and then obviously also you have the organisms, it gets very complex very quickly. They already have three aspects that are very technical. So first what it does, it gives a very general structure. So module 33, introduction, technical breakdown, foundry and code base, cell programming and its application 
applications, platform layer, technical terms, benefit of each component conclusion, you have to consider that it only knows two things. It knows how this technical module has to be structured for any company. And then it has an investor deck of one company. I haven't given it any different input. It just has one investor deck and it knows how the module has to generally look like. And it's able to create a structure based on that. It's actually a really good structure because it has a very clear technology breakdown. We start with a software part and then a cell program and then the platform and technology layer. So there's a lot there. What you could do is you could take that structure and ask Chat EIC to give more detail on each. You can say, okay, now we just talk about the foundry and the code base. Explain to me from the perspective of Ginkgo Bioworks how exactly this technology works. Just that. Then it's going to give you a detailed explanation on that. And then you go to the next one. Explain to me how exactly does the cell programming work? And then it's going to give you an explanation. Of course, you can also, since you know your technology best, you say, okay, I know how this company works. So obviously you have to talk about the different organism, how every single organism is going to be specialized to produce one single compound. And then maybe you know, hey, we always have these five different standard organisms that we're going to provide to our customers. And then you can list them and then Chat EIC can integrate that and it can give more detail on each part. So you have to work with it. You have to give it a little more detail or maybe you can just upload another file just for the tech, look at this white paper and then you can upload the white paper. But you can see as soon as this GPT model knows how to write a grant application, it can become a very powerful assistant and even a writer for any type of project because all it does is what a grant writer would do. They apply their knowledge and they try to transfer it to every single project. And here's the last example, module one. This is the origin story of the company. When was the company founded? What happened? Is this a spin-off? Give me a story. Where does the company come from? So you can see it starts out, Ginkgo Bioworks was founded to make biology easier and it gives you the company foundation. Not everything is in the investor deck. You have to remember, this is all just from one file. It just draws from there. If you have numbers, of course, you can fill them in later. But considering how little effort is necessary to write these sections, it's pretty incredible. So it tells you, okay, it emerged from the vision and so on. Oh, starting from research at MIT. So it understands it is a spin-off, even from the investor deck. And then innovation and impact, it talks about the milestones they've reached. So this is all generated from the simple question to write this module one. Write module one based on the deck I just uploaded. And it just gives you all the info. It even talks about growth, valuation of 15 billion, gives you a little conclusion. So so very detailed. And this is all in one go. So if you wanted to, you can have it give you more detail, but just focusing on one part. For example, these are the five newspapers or these are the five, let's say, online publications that have written articles about us. And then Chad EIC can implement that and you can add that. And you can always have your grant proposal on the side and you can always fill it in. Obviously, I'm not encouraging anyone to have an AI written grant proposal and I wouldn't use it myself because I'm a grant writer myself and I know that the quality is always going to be better if you write everything. But if I was someone who has never written a grant application or if I was someone who has very little experience and this is the only grant I'm going to write and I don't want to have a career as a grant writer, I just want the grant or at least I want to maximize my chances to try to get the grant. And also I have a business to run. I don't have so much time to write. I would definitely use something like that. Why not? I mean, if you think about it, grant agencies are kind of asking for it because if they make companies spend six months or maybe two years, however long it takes to go through through rejections and to apply for a grant. And then they still want to fund the applicants that have great companies. Great companies don't have their CEOs sit down and write grant applications. Great companies have CEOs actually lead the company. So the more help you can get, I think the better. All right. Thanks for watching.